That exclusive interview between Kusimba Oronje, uh, of course, and uh, Angela Okutoi, tennis Kenyan sensation, is coming to you, Katas of KBC Digital, and of course, we will be getting more of such content on the platform as the show progresses. Good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline. My name is Max Olasika. This time round, we want to speak about the state of rugby in the country, and joining us is one man who joins an integral part as far as rugby is concerned, Kenya Rugby Union. Director of Youth Development, and of course, Ken Andrew is still with us. Good to see you, Malimu Komba. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm okay. You are keeping well? Yeah, I'm doing well. Uh, thank you for inviting me for the show. How have you been? Yeah, no, I've been good. Uh, the last time we met, uh, they, we, we are having championship, uh, sorry, the test match were going on. Yes. And uh, England, uh, South, England lost badly to South Africa, and uh, they have now they have parted away with the coach, Johnson. Yes. Uh, it's so unfortunate uh, to part ways. <laughs> it looks like it's a season of high and fire. When a manager performs badly, the yeah. their services get relinquished. Yeah, it's so unfortunate to England now that they only have nine months to the World Cup and uh, now they are struggling to get a new coach to come and work with the team. And you know England are former champions also. Uh, it's so unfortunate for such a big nation uh, to be struggling at such a time. Yeah, but anyway, it, ha it happens. Uh, probably they want to put their house in order and they feel that probably they can get a good guy who will take them to the World Cup. You know, they still... Uh, they didn't believe having lost South Africa in 2019 finals in Japan uh, when the media had uh, praised them and uh, they all knew that England was going to try South Africa. But it went the other way around. The Springboks uh, ran over them. So probably now they want to see now. Uh, things are not working out well. They lost to Springboks. They won again one of the test match last year. But this year, again, the Springboks have come back to, to win the match now. And it's just a few minutes to, a few, a few months to the World Cup. So now they need to organize themselves now. A few minutes ago, Ken, my co-host was lauding Cabinet Secretary for Sports, Ababu Namamba, for being practical in terms of addressing the challenges facing sports in the country. We remember yeah. a few weeks ago there were concerns and, you know, Kenya National Sevens players took to Twitter yeah. to air out their grievances regarding unpaid allowances and salaries yeah, sure. before they traveled to Dubai for HSBC World Seven Series. And I think a day later, Ababu Namamba met the Kenya Rugby Union fraternity alongside, you know, representatives of players, coaches, yeah. to see how they can work together in addressing the stalemate. Yeah, Talk sure. to us, what really happened? What really transpired? Because other people blamed Kenya Rugby Union for sleeping on the job. No, not really. Uh, I think probably we have a new government, and the new government has just come in, and, you know, when we look at the manifesto of uh, uh, the government, uh, uh, the, the government in place now, you see now when they are talking about the sports, you see now they are saying that the government is going to work uh, together, and we know that uh, normally the national teams are are taken care by the the, the, the the government. The government takes care of uh, the the, sport, the the national teams, and we are happy that uh, I think the issue was addressed and uh, the minister came in and assured the players, and now everything is in place. But that's what we want to see in uh, in Kenya. Once the sport grows in that particular direction, where the national team they are being funded by the government, the way as it appears in the manifesto, I think it makes our country to be great and also grow in sports. And where we don't have uh, the complaints from the athletes is who are representing our country, and uh, it also happens. In, in rugby, which is, uh, I think, something uh, good, and we've seen the boys have settled and now they are playing well because I think they are worried. Uh, is this thing really coming out? And when they, we had a meeting, and uh, in fact, we saw the water sports minister said he wasn't aware, but now he got assured and uh, we sat down with the union officials and uh, everything was put in place. I think now it's okay. Okay, uh, I think uh, obviously, you know, he set out to iron out things in rugby. But, you know, uh, the question will go back to the, uh, the, the KRU itself again because, you know, there, there were still talks of, you know, unpaid dues, uh, the players, you know, a lot of it coming back, coming back to bite KRU because, you know, we even saw the team, uh, I think the Simbas, you know, put on Instagram, you know, yeah. fundraising and all, you know. How do we ensure that that happened then because the meeting happened with the CS, how do we ensure that this does not happen again? Uh, okay, you know, you know we've, uh, I think people, what people don't know is that we've come from a very difficult position and the issue of uh, COVID. I know COVID stopped everything. And, uh, you know, now after COVID, now people are trying to come up. And even the companies also, uh, I think they had issues with the, the COVID issues because the profit went down and they were trying to restructure. And initially, even before COVID, we used to have um, quite a number of sponsors with the union. But see, even clubs, not, it's only about, not about rugby, but actually all the sports. And if when you look at some of the generation, actually, they're also struggling. And now they're, once COVID now, is, the situation now is normalizing and so now people now coming back, the companies are also coming back now to sponsor. But see now, once, uh, the, the, once the sponsorship had, um, 
it's a sport they call the penalty pays collapse now. I think that's where now the issues where the federation had some issues with the, at least the inflow of uh, the, the funds. But see now things are settling and once the government has taken over the issue of uh, the sports, mm -hmm. now I think we will not be having the issues with the, with the payment of the players. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, we just also come from the, the election and the way the, the minister I think pointed out. But I think now so far uh, so good. Okay. Yeah. Some guy here called Wilberforce is watching and I think he's asking, ask Malimu, what do we do to, you know, bring back the sponsors that were witnessed on board some time ago when we had the likes of Safaricom, Tasca, KQ on board under the leadership of, of, I don't know, I'm yeah. not getting the spellings <laughs> right. I think he's meaning the eras back yeah, yeah, sure. while we had, yeah. you know, the yeah. corporates he has mentioned, oh, the yeah. on board sponsoring rugby activities, Safari Sevens yeah. and, you know, the likes of Bamburi yeah. sponsoring Super Series. Oh, yeah. I think we are, we are in talks. We are we are in talks, and you know we also we also understand the situation because uh, these have been guys who win with rugby and they have been sponsoring rugby. And uh, once you talk, they also be able to explain, look at the difficult situation we've come from. But uh, give us time. Some time we'll be back because we love the game. And sometimes some you can even see some probably they give uh, small uh, so, uh, some small sponsorship. But you see now that's not be able that's not enough. But I think with time as we grow up. Uh, just one year from away from uh, COVID, but now two, three years, things will be able to to normalize, and the once the company settle, uh, things will be okay. But we, what what he's saying, we are in talks with those companies, and uh, they're happy, and they have been sponsoring the, the game. Ken, I think Kenya Rugby Union has been one of the uh, most uh, well managed federations. It was one of the uh, local sports federations to first comply with the Sports Act 2013 while others are still struggling. Uh, but generally there is this aspect of, you know, corporates, they want to pump a lot of resources into the game, but lately that hasn't been witnessed, not only with rugby, but even various sporting disciplines, football as well. You remember the betting firms pulling out. Which proper policy can we put in place to ensure that, you know, now sponsors and corporates come on board, they get enticed. Of course, there is that value of aspect for your money. I'm putting my money into the Safari Sevens because at the RFUA grounds, it will be filled to the rafters. And, uh, you know, for those people who are passionate about frothy liquids, if Tasca are the one coming on board, they will sip something. Yeah. But which policy do you think we, that can be put in place to entice corporate? Yeah. I think that will fall back to the sports CS right now, you know, to try and uh, have some form of, you know, taxation you know a little bit of taxation on people who come on board to help the sports because especially you know something like rugby it, it is they, they travel almost every weekend True. you know they should are they're playing hsbc they simbas you know they've just come from the repair charge you know they, they have all this you know advertising power that has not been capitalized by a lot of companies maybe because you know sometimes uh Number one, you know, you don't know the performance, so you might be afraid when sometimes when you put your money, you expect performance. So maybe if the government can find a way to ensure they put a certain amount of money that is lesser, mm. uh, they, get tax, they get taxed lesser than yes. what they usually would, you know, so that they can keep pumping money into the clubs. Because with rugby, I feel like it's, it's the sport in Kenya that has a lot of lights and, uh, you know, everything on them. You yes. watch Las Vegas. Kenyan fans are in Las Vegas, in, in, in Dubai, you know, you only see Kenyan flags. So, you know, that's a, that's a market they'd want to go back to, you know. Mm -hmm. As Mwalimwa said, mm -hmm. they came from COVID, it's come from election, you know. Yeah. The, the government has got down its tools, it started working. So I think those are areas they should look. And also, corporates should not fear to try and get their brand out there as much as possible. You know, it might not be a loss, but you know, people who watch sport actually do pay attention to these things. If they see a sponsor on a shirt, uh, they buy the shirt, you know, and they don't know them, I guarantee you that they'll Google and find out exactly what they do, you know, for that sort of awareness, you know, maybe even use their products. You know, loyalty sport is something we see every time and everywhere across the world. So, you know, they should not shun. And the government has to help these uh, clubs across the board, all sports, you know, to try and bring in corporates to not fear to do this thing. Well put out sentiments indeed. And, uh, you know, yeah. in Kenya, it's only two sporting disciplines that uh, market Kenya globally. They raise our flag high. It's athletics and rugby because every time we're participating in the HSBC World 7 Series and Kenya is playing against the heavyweights in yeah. Fiji, Samoa, New Zealand, South Africa, Springboks. Actually, people say that, you know, apart from 
uh, Springboks of South Africa, Shuja is the second best, I think, seventh side yeah. in the African continent. And athletics too, when the likes of Eliud Kipchoge, Faith Kipyegon are uh, playing. Do you think we should capitalize on that advertisement aspect of our sportsmen to market the game and even bring a lot of resources that would push and advocate for the successful running of uh, operations of the game? Yeah, it, I think uh, I think that, that that's a key area because yes. now once the sports are doing well and uh, you know people people uh, companies and corporate institution always what like are sitting with the the winning teams and especially the teams that are doing well and uh, actually one well, rugby is not exceptional is one of uh, the, the sports that's doing well the way you've said and uh, actually we are the second uh, rugby playing nation uh, uh, behind South Africa South Africa holding but Kenya takes position too. Uh, in terms of uh, the numbers, in terms of the games, and also representing the African continent, uh, both in men and women. And that's why uh, you can be able to see, and the way you say the uh, sponsors are coming back, we've come the way I've explained about the COVID, and you can be able to see even when the boys are playing today in Cape Town uh, Sevens, uh, you can see the, 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 the jersey they used in, uh, in Dubai is different from the jersey they used in, in South Africa, because the, the sponsors have come in, and we have now Sport Pesa. Uh, so that tells us uh, how the corporates are coming back to, into the game. And it's and that's why I've said about the other guy who asked, and we are in talks with those corporate institutions, and probably by uh, the end of the season we'll be having quite a number of them on the on, on appearing on the on the on the on the, on the, on the kit of uh, the players. So I think it's a key area. The way you've said, uh, players are normally plays a, a big role, and we've it's not exceptional because we've seen even the, the previous years where we've seen uh, Jeff Oloch, um, the, the one of the big guys, and even this, uh, the Injera, when Injera was uh, playing. Uh, they are appearing on the billboards uh, here in town, so that tells us uh, actually they are, these are the guys that we should be able to they, they should be able to use them to to market the game because corporates want to share in them into also marketing their products so they can get value of, uh, of 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 what they have invested into the game. Now let's talk about what is happening as far as Cape Town Sevens is concerned. Not uh, a good outing for the Kenyan lads in Shujanda, Damian McGrath, and the same happened as well last weekend yeah. in Dubai Seven. What what uh, do you think we should give the technical bench and boys time as well? You know Kenyans yeah. like uh, grumbling and they want quick results. So when it <laughs> delays, they grow impatient. Yeah. No, no. We we've started well and uh, we can be able to see how they played in uh, in Hong Kong. And yes. Now they have come down to South Africa. Uh, okay, the pool was a bit tough. Uh, went down to Argentina 19-5 and uh, down to New Zealand 31-5. Uh, but we had to play Spain, but now that means we are out of uh, we are out of the main cup quarters uh, because now Spain uh, it will depend. It's been a while Spain, since we qualified Spain. to the main cup quarters, right? Yeah, but last uh, in Dubai we were very close. Uh, Dubai we were very close, but I know as we, we progress on, I think there are also new players have come in. We can be able to see like uh, uh, Abukuse who have come in. Uh, we also have uh, Roni of uh, Mwamba who has also been brought in by uh, the, by the coach. So I think this. Players Bob Mohati of uh, KBC, uh, so KCB, KCB. Yeah, yeah, so so joined in. So we, we what, what we are going to see probably in the next uh, f uh, the fourth and the fifth league, uh, Kenya will be playing well, and that's what the rules have been our norm uh, when you look at uh, how she just have played. Uh, by the fifth season, the boys have chilled, and now that's where now the world now fears uh, the Kenyan team because now they, they are all round and they're out to, to, to win the games and you'll be able to find them consecutive matches. Uh, if they maintain the consistency, they will be in the main cup uh, probably three, four consecutive before now at the end where now the boys normally, I don't know what happens, uh, but because now with change of uh, the coach and coach now is uh, gelling well with the players, he's coming up with the, his best, uh, best, best team. So we'll be able to see that, uh, how it's progressing. And you saw last weekend in Dubai how they brought down to England, uh, scored the last minute, and we also drew with Australia. And Australia, remember, they were the champions of uh, uh, Hong Kong. So I think things will be okay. I think from Cape Town, it'll come down now to have training. So, but move the the uh, the third and the the so the 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 fourth and the fifth, the fifth series, uh, the, the the team will be okay. Ken, having followed the game closely and uh, being a product of uh, high school, that you know chance a lot of talents in rugby and football as well to you know some of these national teams do you think we're missing that era of the likes of uh, Colin Sinjera, Andrew Amonde, Biko Adema, Amphrey Kayange, the legend himself mm -hmm. and the transition has not been quite smooth? 
Uh, uh, you know, like, I, I know that, you know, eras come to an end. You yes. Know? We had all those great players, but we've also moved to, I feel like, a squad which is, which can work better than even the last time because, you know, they've had enough time in mm. playing rugby across the, at the high schools. And even these days, we see a lot of rugby in universities, you know. Yeah. That's, that's somewhere which has really grown in the past year. So I feel like a better squad can come of it than the previous one. I think uh, what might be ailing is the little bit of experience, the little bit of, you know, you know, know how that you can make little mistakes. And also, you know, everything is sort of new still, you know. The, the, the Injeras, the Hyangas, those guys, you know, they had it all. You know, a great coach and, and the, the squad themselves, they were seriously, you know, seasoned, you know, uh, experienced players at the time. So, you know, we, we just have to have belief in this squad because I know a lot of young players, mm -hmm. not only from high school and, and, and all, but even from universities are coming into the national team. So it's just how the coach decides to use them. And you know, the, the season, the local season is ongoing. So, you know, even from 15s, you can pitch a couple of players, you know, who you'd feel like they'd be better playing sevens than 15s. You know, we can see a lot of them in the championship and all, you know, so I'd say the squad can be built. It's just uh, the yeah. amount of time because, you know, as you said, mm -hmm. people and Kenyans, they get impatient. <laughs> Quick <laughs> results. Yes. Malima, I'm no, sure you no. are in agreement. You read from the yeah, same script yeah, with yeah, him. The yeah. blend of youth and experience, and experience in yeah. our national teams, both yeah. Simbas and Shuja, and Shuja yeah, yeah, it is something out. that is welcome. Yeah, it, uh, and so it's working out. You can now be able to see even the players who played for some time. We need to appreciate the likes of Injera and uh, Amonde because they were, they led the the, the the team and we can be able now to see how the other guys have, have taken off well. You can uh, William Baka, Billy Odiambo. I think these are guys and uh, Haman Umwa. You see now the way they are leading the, the new guys who are coming in. It's unfortunate for Onyala who has uh, end uh, yeah, end, end season injury. Uh, but uh, others also be able to to step in and I think that's why the coach is trying to feel. You know, Onyala had stepped up so well and uh, we saw how he played in Hong Kong. Uh, I think he played so well. But now uh, I think that what he was saying is that uh, just about how the union has packaged itself and preparing uh, for future. You know, the, the way they want to identify the players and recently, I think last month we had uh, a press court. I think that this is something that had not happened, a national press court uh, tournament that was held at Kenya Rugby Union. And this was brought players from uh, uh, the, the schools across the, the country and they uh, hosted by Kenya Rugby Union and the Kenya Rugby uh, footed the, the, the tournament. Yeah, so you can be able to see why why was that uh, bringing? Because now they were able to select the players and the players will be brought to the camp. So now this they under t uh, will be able to put under under 20 the, the national team for under 20. So now when we come to 2027 and 2031 World Cup, you see now we already have a, t a young team that was well prepared and they have played together, they have gelled and uh, the coach have be able to identify and uh, okay, be able to to improve on their skills. So that's what the, the union does and uh, that's preparation, what Nani is doing. As much as we have the club, but we're also looking at the future, where we, we, these are young guys that will be able to take up the, the national team in the future. So we go back to, to schools and you can be able to see in South Africa and um, in Australia and New Zealand, the schools play a big role. Yes. And they, what normally do the federations, normally identify the talents, put them together and give them the right skills. And that's now they grow up to come to the national team. You can see like Mackenzie who was playing in high school and can be able to track down this record for the national team and is one of the guy, big guys in the New Zealand, uh, New Zealand national team now. So the same applies to the union and that's the mechanism that we are putting in place. As much as KSSA, one of our biggest stakeholders is doing their role, but the union now also steps in up because now we know now we take the, the right direction for this particular by players put them in the, in the same group and uh, put them already uh, in, the, in the national team uh, perspective and participation. So bring elite coaches to be able to identify and be able to put the right skills on these young players. And also, we also bring the training of uh, the teachers. And uh, So initially, they were just training the, the teachers, but now we're also having now SNC uh, for the schools because conditioning of these young guys is not done properly. The coach just goes there to coach, but now we also have one schools to have SNC uh, guys to be able now also to condition the players uh, within their regions. So when they come to the national team, they are ready fit and they can be able to fit the national team and represent our country in the right direction. Definitely. Of course, we're coming back after the commercial break. Malimu Kombo, Kenya Rugby Union in charge of youth development, speaking to us. And when it comes to matters, nurturing talent is so passionate and quite an expert because that is his area of specialization, ensuring that, you know, those who showcase progress at a tender age get to, you know, be followed upon and play at the bigger stage as they grow. And he's also the founder and of uh, 
uh, Comras Rugby Football Club, which has played an immense role in the development of the sport in the country. Don't go away, stay tuned. We're taking a commercial break and we'll be back to continue with the state of rugby in the country and talk a little bit of Kenya Cup action, which is currently underway. <laughs> 